Hello, today I would like to speak with you about the architecture of the French architect Jean Nouvel. Jean Nouvel has two projects so far in New York City. The two of them are residential buildings. One is the 40 Mercer Street down in Soho and the other one is the 111th Avenue right behind me, the building right here. Uh, the building in Mercer Street was designed earlier in the end of 90s and this building was uh, completed in the year 2005. I would like to use today a comparative method and compare this building to another project by Jean Novel in Barcelona. It's at Akbar Tower in Plaza de las Glorias. The comparison between the two projects would allow you to explore some of the features of the architecture of Jean Novel. The criteria that we would use are the relationship to the site, the construction techniques, the facade system, the materials, the colors, and the overall effect of the project. Both projects have something characteristic and which is pertinent to the architecture of Jean Novel. The two projects focus on the image. The two projects are in a very important urban area. In one case, here in Manhattan, we have a building which is right next to the West Side Highway. So a lot of people pass next to it and it's really a place of, of traffic. You can see this anywhere from uh, the West Side in downtown and midtown Manhattan. The other building in Barcelona, the Akbar Tower, is right next to the Plaza de los Glorias. It is next to a very important intersection, which is the uh, Avenida Meridiana, which is the one that goes vertically from uh, the upper part of the city down to the sea uh, and to the Arts Hotel, and on the other side, the avenue, which is the uh, Avenida Diagonal. So the project is in a very strategic point. Since both projects are in these strategic areas, what was important for architect was to create an image that would be memorable to anyone who passes by and anyone who looks at the city. The Akbar Tower is much bigger in size. You can see it anywhere from the city. This building in Manhattan, it's smaller, but it is seen from the lower part of the city. So in a smaller area, the architect had to use all the devices, all that uh, architecture allowed to create a memorable image, image that impacts. There is something to say about the architecture of today, which is this idea of media. A lot of buildings today are designed more about the image, more about what the effect of this building would be when it's published in magazines, on websites, on uh, videos, and uh, the architects are a little less interested in the actual space, in the actual uh, impact on the life of the people. This mediatic uh, in image and importance of architecture is something that is due to uh, the importance of media, television, cinema, and also to uh, social media nowadays. It is much faster and easier to publish a building on a website and there are millions and even billions of people who have access to seeing these projects than the people who actually live in the city and who uh, can go and visit it uh, in person. Now, speaking about the two projects, the project in Manhattan is located in the Chelsea area. It is next to the High Line, an area where, uh, which was uh, redeveloped uh, recently, about five years ago. The High Line uh, opened and so far in the first part and now it's expanding to its uh, third part. The whole area around the High Line has been redeveloped. We can see projects by some of the world's uh, most important architects, like for example, Renzo Piano, uh, Frank Gehry right next to Jean Novel or Shigeru Ban also right next to uh, Jean Novel. This uh, project by Novel was very strategic for uh, the site uh, because of its location and because of the impact on the city that it has. The building has two faces or two kinds of facade. There is one facade which is the one that respects the neighborhood, the one that uh, adapts the materials of Chelsea and the traditional material of this part of the city, which is the brick. 
the north and east facade of the buildings are designed with bricks. The south and the west facade of the city are designed with glass. The architect used glass as a way to capture and reflect the light. We see this facade which has this constant vibration and every, uh, every piece of the facade is oriented towards a different angle. So in a way the building doesn't have any particular light effects but because of this different orientation of the facade what it achieves is to reflect the sunlight in a completely different way in every point of the facade. So when we look at the facade from uh, the other side from from let's say the south or from the Chelsea Piers it it has these um, surfaces rectangular or square surfaces that have different colors. People may think that they have different colors because of the quality of the glass but in fact the color is different not because of the color of the glass but because of the different way that it reflects the river, uh, the sky and and uh, the city itself. The other building in Barcelona, the Akbar Tower, it is covered with different layers of glass and aluminum. The aluminum is painted with many different colors. It has red, it has orange, it has blue, even has a little bit of yellow on, on the upper part, which Novel calls the French sun in the facade. This colorful effect could be observed and admired from many parts of the city. At light, the facade lit and is almost like a, this uh, lighthouse that is in the center of the city in, in this new uh, redevelopment area that uh, is called Ventidos Arroba or, or the old industrial area which is now redeveloped, redesigned and really booming uh, for the city of uh, Barcelona. In Barcelona what happens is that the interior layer of the facade is colored. The exterior layer is made out of glass. There are glass surfaces that are oriented at different angle and could be rotated that reflect the sunlight. This reflection and also transparency of the facade achieves the fact that the tower almost dematerializes at some uh, moments and uh, times of the day when the sun is reflected in a particular way. Even if the tower is very big, it's really uh, um, almost as tall as the future Sagrada Familia and as tall as the other towers uh, next to the uh, uh, sea in Barcelona. Even if the tower is so big, because of this particular effect of the membrane, it reflects the light and dematerializes. This idea of dematerialization we can see in a tower by Jean Novel designed in Paris, in La Défense. He designed one of his early projects was this uh, tower without end or the infinite tower in which the building would start with something opaque and massive like stone in the lower part and it would go to something more transparent on the top and it would end up with a completely glass uh, facade on the top of it. So in a way the tower dematerializes in space. In terms of structure and building technology, the two buildings are built in a, a two very different ways. The one in Manhattan is uh, made with uh, a steel structure and it has uh, concrete slabs. The facades on one side is, is uh, the facades are just cladding, they are not uh, necessarily structural. While in Barcelona we have concrete shell as a facade which is structural. That is one of the few skyscrapers, probably the only one that I can ever think of, which is built with uh, concrete shell load-bearing uh, wall structure. It means that the wall in the perimeter is structural. It is not made out of steel as 99% of the other skyscrapers, but it's made out of concrete. The architect used square, uh, square windows, which are perforations in the facade. What this achieves is, is that we have this irregular grid, almost like a, a patchwork in the facade, which doesn't really give us an idea of uh, the floors where they are located. It doesn't really give us an idea of the scale of the building. 
every window or every floor has three different uh, windows in different heights. Some uh, floors are also higher than others. And because we cannot identify where the slabs are in the facade, it's really hard to understand how many floors this building has, which is quite unique for a skyscraper. Most other skyscraper we can just see in the facade the expression of where the floors are, how they're built and they mark uh, the, the, the different uh, floors and, and we can count the height, calculate the height of the building. Um, the building in Barcelona has st a structural concrete core and structural facade. Everything in between is built with metal beams that connect the exterior uh, structure, uh, the shell, with the interior uh, core. The facade is uh, something added uh, on the top of it. The surfaces in the interior of Barcelona have these reflected uh, ceilings in the lobby. So when we are in the lobby, we are almost in this immaterial world, world of colors, world of reflection, worlds of transparency, so the effect in the inside is, is quite unique. The colors in the facade are decided according to the structural stresses. The more red we have, the more uh, tension we have, and the, more, the less tension and compression we have in the facade, the more blue it becomes, so we can really read this facade through the uh, perimeter. Another point to, about the two projects is the effect that they have on the city. Uh, every city needs these landmark buildings. Every city has these moments that activate certain area, uh, elements, uh, buildings, uh, key points that are a reference for the area. They attract people to see them. They're also something that you can see anywhere around uh, from the uh, river or from the city itself. These buildings are the creators of the skyline of the city, which is this remarkable image which we look at and which helps us identify the city and really uh, creates the unique character, in this case of Manhattan right behind me, and in the case of the Akbar Tower of the beautiful city of Barcelona.